Welcome, net fans, to this third versus fourth final game for our August League here at the only place for cyberspace, this side of the South Pole, Ace Comics and Games for Brisbane Tabletop Gaming Network. I'm JC, John, commentating here for you today on this game, but I'm also joined by, unfortunately, one of the players in this game. We'll see why I say unfortunately later. Marcus, Marcus, our valiant T.O., also here with me today, Marcus. All right, it's good to be here, John. Thank you. No worries at all. So in a moment, we're going to get started and walk through the game in which you are versing Dutch, Mm -hmm. our friend Dutch playing Wayland, yourself playing Schaefer. Yes. Um, obviously, a really interesting timing for us with these um, this round of finals with the new knockout rules at the end of um, a, a fantastic league. Again, thank you for organising that. You did a great job. It's a pain in the ass. Um, <laughs> because we actually saw a major sh- um, shift up at the last moment with the release of Creation and Control. So one of the big things we were watching was um, how players used those new cards that they literally got off the boat just a few moments before they had to play. Yeah. Um, and you're one of the players that used it. Yes, uh, I did heavily augment a lot of my decks. I think I'd made better choices with my Shaper, which is what I'm playing with here first. Um, however, it was a mostly untested Haas Bioroy strategy, which you'll see later, which I think didn't work out too well. We won't me. mention the war. We won't mention But anyway, the war. let's go. But you're actually up against uh, Dutch. Now, Dutch is, uh, shook, up, shook up the league a bit. He came in, placed... A lot lower than he wound up making it through to in the final. Mm. Um, he did not use any of the new cards. In um, speaking with Dutch just after the game, his comment was, "I play Wayland. It still kills people fine." <laughs> yes, and that's exactly what. Well, we're going to see him try to do in this game here. So yes. he's getting kitted up on his first round here. Uh, he's actually defending his remote straight off the bat. He's leaving HQ and R and D wide, wide open mm. with an opening play against Shaper. So. What's going through your head, opening with a green level clearance there, great card obviously for Wayland picking up the cash. You're looking at that as an opening play and thinking what? I'm thinking that I've got a great opportunity here to try and sneak in some early points, so obviously the first thing I want to do is run that deck. Which you do. I get lucky. Opening with the dirty laundry. Mm -hmm. Although I am a bit dubious because Dutch has broken a lot of hearts to get to this point. Um, He (laughs) took out the competition's third place player in his first round. Yes, Uh, that was sad. Yeah, and so... And brutal. Yes, very brutal. Um, He's a victim of, uh, rather, he was a victim of not shuffling his hand properly, (laughs) uh, his deck properly, rather, and it cost him the game. By the way, that is the only time you want to see Hadrian's Wall um, is in the hand, and that is the only time you don't want to see Scorched Earth is in the hand. Two cards which have absolutely no use to you whatsoever... Um, despite, what is that, three three draws. Mm. You basically opened the game and gone, right, I'll run R&D, HQ, yeah. HQ. Uh, while it's wide open, I'll just hit it while I can, yeah. Fair enough. And yeah. I also get a good sense of what he's got, <laughs> and now I can see that he's got a tag. I was going to say, so now, in turn two, he's double iced off a remote and advanced that card. You're obviously thinking, hmm, that remote's probably got something tasty. Yeah, I think it's definitely an agenda, but there's nothing much I can do about it at this point. Obviously, um, using the laundry, you've actually managed to... Actually, where is your... We've got eight credits. Mm-hmm. Eight credits on turn two, which isn't bad for Shaper, particularly without dropping the um, Magnum Opus, which I think you do have in hand mm-hmm. at this point. So, obviously, um, Dirty Laundry seems a reasonably interesting card in terms of synergizing with early aggressive runs like that. Definitely, definitely. But uh, we didn't actually see much of that play. Even though it's neutral, we didn't see a lot of runners uh, fielded. I think, actually, you were the only one I saw all night. Um, using the card. Mm. You've got a couple of other economic cards in here as well. I can see just on the tail end of your hand there, I think it's a Ice Analyzer. Yeah, well, my deck is based on um, Femme Fatale, and I run three copies of it, and the idea is to be uh, able yeah. to surgically strike wherever I need to. Um, it's also got a lot of supporting ability to be able to remove it and reinstall it to change targets as I need to. But the problem with that is it costs a lot. So I do you need, need a lot of cash. I need a strong income. Which is why we need the great work, Magnum Opus, Snap down. It's got to be in every deck. Got to be in every shape. Is that an Esher? I see an Esher. Oh, yeah, I just drew an Esher. And is that, what is the red card that we've got there? Is that a retrieval run? Is it that would what that be, is? yes. Of course it is. And this is tying into what you're saying before. Mm-hmm. This deck's using, are you using Scavenge? Yes, the new and card. I did, did yep. bring in Scavenge. I thought Scavenge was Whoa! perfect. Whoa! And there he goes, flips it straight over, scores the Project Atlas with a point. That's not what you want to see versus yeah. any Wayland deck, but particularly <laughs> Dutch's. No surprise there, though, really. He's doing but it. Here oh, I right! Go. Finally taking advantage of a wide open deck. It's a counter strike. Takes the private security force straight off the top, along with the hostile takeover. That's a three point in one turn. You're feeling pretty good on turn three if you've pulled three agenda points out. 
of an undefended Wayland deck. Yeah, for me, it's a race right now. It's a race to try and beat his tag and bag. And, and that is exactly what I think he's now going to try and do to you. Ice Analyzer. Again, not a bad play at this point because we know we've got ice on the field that hasn't been rezzed. If we can get a run into that remote, that's going to that's gonna pay some dividends, particularly because it's cost bugger all to put into play. He's mm -hmm. slapped another agenda down, well, another card down immediately into that defended remote. He's still leaving his hand wide open. So at this point, defending R&D, you've, you've scored some points from R&D, uh, you've seen him score out of that remote, what are you thinking about your next target? Well, I'm thinking that I've still got to go with the softest target while I've got no ice out. Uh, it's been slow going for me. Uh, I've got to be careful not to chew up too much of my income. And did you did you trash set. that just then? Did you pay for the pad? Yes, you I did, did trash it out of hand. I didn't want him, him setting up a big income that he's going to need for his double scorched earth. I saw you just trying, you know, kill him with a card throw there. Yeah, that was uh, my ninja skills. Bit are of a lacking. gambit play. <laughs> didn't quite get the fire. <laughs> not quite. I suppose there's an advantage as well by trashing that straight out of the hand. You've also reduced the number of cards at play in his hand. That's right. And with an undefended HQ, it gives you the option to go again. But he has just advanced whatever card that is. I need to keep his hand size relatively low to increase my chances of actually pinching something out of his hand. Well, that's true. Yeah, Daily Cast, I know this has been a, a fan favourite of the night. Um, i got to say, I'm a big fan of it too. Just great versatility gives us something other than the same old card. Sure, Gamble's a great card, but... There's some limitations to it as well. Yeah, I like income that doesn't require a click. Yep, absolutely. Particularly when you've got, you know, target-rich environments like the one you're currently in. Another pad campaign down, bites the dust. Yeah, mainly trying to keep his, uh, his economy under control. I think that's the trick yes. to any Netrunner game is that... If oh, you, can control, you don't want to see that. Yeah, if you can control both sides' economy, then you can control the game, essentially. And, and uh, for the most part, he's been kept pretty low on the creds, but with a double atlas, that's just loom. It is now all about time. Now mm. it's just about how many credits can he get on that ID card before he's able to just press the magic button and zap mm. you dead. And I think in hindsight, too, I should have spent more time building up my credit pool there, but I'm also trying to keep him broke by getting him to constantly res. Oh, and I, I think that's a good play. Aggressive, yeah. aggressive play, particularly with shapers, where the inclination is to not be, um, does seem to be the, the go at the moment. Um, it certainly was something we saw from other shaper players uh, to their benefit through the course of the evening. Interesting one here, the Chimera um, actually really doesn't want to see an ice analyzer, because every time that's flipping over to res, it's actually generating credits on the mm. Ice Analyzer. Interesting card, but we're still going to need to see more of it, I think, to really appreciate um, what it's capable of. I think it's going to be a handy staple in future games. Definitely. And, and again, it, it seems to be that the shape of new cards are all about increased utility, um, they've got strong synergy, and they've got a lot of stuff that really doesn't cost them as much, which is the opposite of what they've traditionally had. Mm. Expensive stuff that takes a long time. Mm -hmm. So that's another run on HQ. Again, you've got to be feeling reasonably desperate at this point, uh, but he's not giving you many other options. Oh, yep, that's still there, that Scorched Earth. Yeah. In case you've forgotten, <laughs> have we got a Plascrete? Is there a Plascrete somewhere in here? I must admit I don't run them. Uh, I think they're too circumstantial, even though just about everyone runs a tag and bag these days. It's, yeah, I still think it's too circumstantial. And kudos to you, sir. Jolly good, I do say. <laughs> pip ra ra for that courageous decision. But tell me, in the moment, <laughs> right now, where you are staring down the double barrel of a Wayland Scorched Earth, are you feeling... As strong about that decision not to have the only card that could save your life? Well, yeah, and I think, too, what it comes down to is with the new tournament rules stating that a flat line is a 10 nil victory outright, to, regardless of what you scored, I think, mm. makes that even more powerful. It and does. And I think you're going to see it skew uh, a lot of people's strategies to make sure that they've got that in their deck. Yeah. Because those three cards would essentially be all you need. And again, that, that, that key comment there, the, um, the new power that is Flatline, Wayland deck, two advanced atlases. We know he has at least one Scorched Earth in hand. This would be the case in point. You are now, even with that fantastic three score in a turn, you are now really pushing stuff uphill. But we've got the Femme Fatale. Now, you've mentioned this is what the whole deck's based around. You've, you've got your test run pulling that out, mm -hmm. pulling that into play. Because you're using test run, are you, you're now going to, I'm guessing, try and get a run in while it's in play effectively well, not quite for yeah, free but a lot cheaper I think this is my biggest mistake here this game is, is pulling that out right now um, I've got 
very little options where I actually need it. I've got a remote server there that's well defended but with nothing in it. I've got um, an absolutely open hand and then above it I've got uh, R&D with um, what I know is defending it. It's, it's yep. kind of, I think, a, a bit of a bad move on my part. But I can sort of see your position in terms of, you know, if he does drop anything into that other space where it could hide, mm. that's what you're really doing here. You're saying, I know what cards you've got in hand. I know I can get to the top of that R&D if I need to. The moment you draw something, you either need to put it down in that remote or I'm going to run it from your hand. So you're just making sure that if he does do that, you're geared up to smash through that remote. Mm. The problem is that it is just on the edge here now. If he can just get a few more um, cash up and he doesn't draw an agenda, if the agendas stay put deep in that deck, it's <laughs> going to be tough. It is going to be tough. Is, have you got any potential? I did see that obviously an Escher in your hand there before. Have you got any potential? That's a lot of credits. He's just <laughs> piled on there with good old hedge fund. Yes. That thing we were talking about, that's, um, that's exactly what it's shaping up to be right now. But have you got any cards in this deck for the deep diving? Have you got any of the R&D interfaces or mediums? Or Once upon a time I did uh, with this deck, but with the new creation control cards, I went away from that strategy yep. more to being having the versatility to strike where I want. Different it, targets. It used to be uh, a strategy just purely based on R&D, and um, yep. I would use all three of my uh, Femme Fatales to target each of the ice protecting R&D and then use dig, um, deep digging to try and win. But I was finding that a lot of people were just circumventing that by installing over the top of their ice and yeah. um, absolutely removing the need for um, full femme fatale. So that's why I went away from that to more of a, a strike-based strategy. It's actually an interesting little combo you've just set up there as well. I don't, wouldn't, wouldn't normally see a femme fatale being used to bypass a chimera, but because you've also got the ice analyzer, if he ever reses the thing, it'll generate the credit that you need from femme fatale to bypass the sub <laughs> <Yes. team. laughs> I'm actually really liking that. Oh, but here it is, guys. Oh, here we go. Uh, he's got the magic number that he needs. He's, he's pulled the... Uh, well, it's... I feel like I should have a violin at this moment. Yeah. A moment of silence. Because <laughs> all he needs, of course, is um, it's a second copy. Well, he's got it in hand card. already. He's oh, just that's right. Out. He does. Yes. That would be one of those cards that's been there from the very beginning that wasn't one of the cards that lets you win the game. It's the card that lets him win the game. And, and with two right. of them, and with you with a tag, this is really only going to go one way. I'm not sure what he's doing. Maybe it's just... Oh, he, he's counting good. Bam. Double scorched earth. Bam. Yeah, and so this puts me in a precarious situation now because whilst I did have a three-point buffer, now I don't. This is the second follow-up, uh, having just been ignobly flatlined, yes. but perhaps predictably so. Mm -hmm. Again, as we saw all evening, people are just continuing to use the original HP I get money for free card. I don't think you can beat this this strategy or this, this identity's raw power of just being able to spend one click and get... Um, I'd rather you get one um, credit for each time you install the first thing you install each turn. It's just money for nothing. You can't beat that. Absolutely. And and your, your, your chicks as card sleeves in the case of Dutch here. Those, that's, those are the only card sleeves my wife has banned me from using. She was okay with, with skimpy Princess Leia until she saw me doing what Dutch is doing right now. And funnily enough, when she saw me thumbing my way through a deck of other women, that was when she said, I'm actually not cool with that. I'm actually not cool with that. So if you're watching, honey, that's, that's you know, I took your advice on, on face value. He's a um, boy. And Which... look at that. It's exactly the same opening that we saw in the last game. Green level clearance. I've only got one ice on now. I've got two ice. People keep arguing about whether or not it's a good card, but people keep playing it in virtually every game that I have an opportunity to see it. And I think there's my biggest mistake for this game here. Because I'm 7-0 down, I should have probably protected both hand and deck. But instead went for the, the fast credit start. Yeah, it could, could go either way. I mean, like we saw, I mean, what are the odds that his early runs course. are actually going to get any uh, results, right? And there oh, is. there it is. Yes. <laughs> R&D interface, bang. <laughs> Holy damn. So now we're just playing through the game for posterity. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, oh, talk to us a bit about you know, what you saw over the course of the evening. You and I were walking around a bit in, in terms of how players were using CNC more generally. Uh, how has it shaped up the, the meta in your opinion? I think in some cases, just for this tournament, it might have affected some people adversely because they only got their hands on those cards moments before the tournament started so a lot of it a lot of the use of creation control is experimental 
Um, having said that, though, it's um, got some really good kickers in that set. Um, it's certainly definitely worth getting, and um, I think it's going to change the way we play Netrunner from the future. And I think a lot of the cards in it will still be useful far and far into the future. I totally agree. Well, Marcus, bad luck on that second game there. Uh, look, at least it saved on carbon tax. That was a fairly <laughs> rapid uh, broadcast as they go. But overall, a, a great first game, a great tournament overall. Thank you. Um, an amazing league. And thank you on behalf of everybody that was playing there at um, Ace Comics and Games in this round um, for, for your support and organising and doing all the crap stuff with numbers that none of us want to do while we're busy <laughs> hammering each other with cards. Oh, um, thank you very much. And uh, I'll encourage our viewers too to check out the uh, other video that we've got we actually recorded the final as well it's an absolutely cracker of a game and it's got some pretty good commentary as well fantastic and also feel free to always check out um, Brisbane Tabletop Gaming News you can also see a whole bunch of other interviews that we did there with some of the other players after each of their games there's also links to any of the videos you may have missed and links to other games happening in and around in our community so thanks stay tuned click on the next link